Hey guys, it's Veron from Secret of the Stars and welcome back to my channel. So before we start, I'm sorry if I sound a little weird. I'm having like allergic right now. This right now, I think it's because of the weather change and my nose is a little clogged. So if you sound a little bit weird, it's not gonna be any different from last video because I was sick the last time I was recording something. But anyway, let's jump into the video. So today we'll be playing with colored pencils. For some reason lately, I've been really getting into them. Um, it kind of started with the flaming swordswoman piece, which is like two videos ago, I think. And I don't know, I've been caving to use them more and more. And when I imagine my pieces, like it's, it's a split now between watercolor or doing colored pencils. I mean, I still need to finish my Merlin piece. <laughs> I'm sorry, Merlin. Uh, <laughs> so, I still have to finish my digital piece, which is my fan art for Merlin from Fake and Order. But I just want—I just wanted to play with colored pencils for some reason. So, that's what we'll be doing. I don't know when this caving will end, or when I'll return to watercolor, or if I'll ever get to return to digital art. But we'll see what will happen. So today, um, I wanted to play a little bit more with line art, and actually this entire piece is a bit of a playful piece for me. So I haven't really been doing, I'd say, not really intense, but really obvious line art lately. Lately, I've been trying, been trying to slightly hide my line art by using very thin lines. Or by adding line art that's the same color as what's already on the piece, so it means putting the line art as the last thing. Or I just haven't been making it obvious at all. For some reason, for this piece, I really wanted to do with do sticker line mates, like what I used to do. This is so this is a bit of a return to my old older style where I would use really thick. Um, what do you call this? The weight of the pen. So it's a. I used to use 0.3. Now I'm using 0.1 and 0.003. Um, so it's a bit of a throwback to that old style. So I used to have really thick lines with really obvious indentations, and all of the shadows and folds were indicated or pretty obvious because the I drew it all with the with the pen. So there's a bit of a tamer version of it. But it still harkens back to that. So for the colors, it really was a big risk. And it was a bit dangerous. Not really dangerous, but it was a big step. So if you've been watching my channel for the past weeks, I've been playing a lot with lighting and shadows and colors. And I've been trying to slowly incorporate that more into the way that I do things. Starting from the imagination phase, I'm already taking lighting into account. I'm trying to take background into account. So, now I've been trying to do that more. So, what I wanted to do with this piece is like a. Basically, the inspiration was, you know, those Instagram photos where you see someone with their. on a blank wall, say, and there's a projector. And the light and the projection is on the person itself. So sometimes you'd see like this really cool gradient of colors on the person, or maybe there's some texture, or maybe it's a painting. So you know, those hipster fancy Instagram photos. Um, oh gosh, I remember the there was a slight scandal regarding the Van Gogh Museum exhibit uh, projector thing. <laughs> and I think that's kind of where I might have drawn a bit of inspiration for this particular piece, but if you're not familiar, if you don't know the tea, <laughs> that was really hot. I mean, it's it was, it was useless tea. Mm, okay, fine, maybe not, but anyway, so here in the Philippines, um, so there's a Van Gogh exhibit, but instead of making the actual pieces or prints or duplicates of the piece, they projected it instead. So it's projected on the wall using projectors, obviously. And somebody on Twitter, I think, commented that um, I guess the gist of it was that 
the experience won't be the same. It's it. Uh, it's just better to go to a museum and actually see the actual Van Gogh paintings. If I I could be stand, I could stand to be corrected, but I know that the Van Gogh paintings are in the Louvre. Um, so, in a sense, a lot of people got mad because it's a sign of privilege, or you know, somebody being super privileged and not being connected to reality, or something like that, or not understanding that people can't afford to go to the Louvre. You know, or I think also because she sounded super condescending and commenting that people only go for Instagram photos, which is you know it will be it's true. People will go for Instagram photos, but why stop them? It's a way for them to enjoy the art, so not them be. <laughs> anyway, how they get into this? Um, I guess maybe that have that stuck in my mind for a little bit. So anyway. Given that, that was the theme that I wanted to do. I wanted to draw this character with a gadget of color on top of him, like you would see on projected, maybe what you would see from that Van Gogh exhibit, is what I'm trying to say. And it's, it is really an experiment on light, on color, um, on shadows. It, it was a test of how I would figure out how to go about this. So. Sometimes doing art is like a puzzle. You really, really have to figure out what you're gonna do, how you're gonna go about things, what would you do to not make it a complete and utter mess. And that's what I tried to do with this piece. So I wanted to do like a blue and a pink gradient type of overlay. And this was the easy if I painted this in digital. I would have just painted the character and then slapped a pink to blue gradient on top, set an overlay, and voila, I'd be done. But because of this traditional, I need to be super careful not to make the colors muddy. I need to make sure that the blue or the pink was still obvious. And it doesn't, it kind of doesn't help. The character that I chose to draw today um, has really dark, wine-ish colored hair. So... The pink will certainly blend in, and the blue, I wasn't sure if it'll be muddy or if it'll turn green or if it'll... I don't know what would have happened. So I tried to be careful. First, I made sure to start at a small area first in the hair, choosing a really small, unnoticeable section. So if I needed to switch the color tone that I was using, I could easily do that without ruining the entire thing. And then next, I started working on the skin, which is what you see right now. So skin, skin was tough because from what the photos that I saw in reference, you can barely see the skin. Basically, you see tones of the pink or the blue, but I wasn't exactly sure how to go about that. Like I knew I maybe I should have put a skin tone under it first, and then maybe overlay the pink over it. But what I ended up doing was just to put the pink and the blue first, and then put the skin tone, and then add like a um, a reddish skin. I mean, a reddish shadow, just to tie it together. And for the shirt right now, I'm being super careful so that I don't erase the blue part, cause the pencil that I'm using is a deep blue. <laughs> so it was a bit of a challenge. It was a lot of it was a lot of being careful and being really light-handed about it. So I couldn't really go ham on the, the layers. Um, I need to make sure that the parts that I want to have blue would still look blue or pink. And it was a really fast and short drawing. And even the sketch took me tops an hour to get done. But trying to navigate how I wanted to not screw this up was the it was a fun challenge to be honest and it's not the best obviously i mean if you it'd be better if i started copying a photo realistic thing first or or, or maybe i could have copied the photo first instead of just jumping right into it but you know sometimes you get ideas and <laughs> you just want to do them right away and yeah <laughs> this was it 
even, even with the black, I, I planned these pants to be super black, but since I realized that it's a uh, this light from a projector overlaid on top of it, I really couldn't make it super dark. Admittedly, some parts could have used more shadow um, because light, strong light creates strong shadows, but I was too scared, so you know, baby steps. <laughs> Even the way I hold my pencils today, it's I, I did this with the flaming pencils one, but I only used this kind of hold before with lead pencils, and it's to create an even coat of lead or color. Quickly, evenly, light handedly. So I didn't adapt this style with colored pencils because I assumed it. I use my normal way of folding stuff, but you know it helps. <laughs> See, so there's more, there's a bit more tone variation. Um, it's actually quite comfortable to hold if you get used to it. So you might see this type of hold more often, especially when I do colored pencils. I think it applies the most with colored pencils, mainly because it's comfortable, it's easy, it covers a lot of ground. Um, yeah. So I'm doing the background really quickly. I wanted to keep it light. I didn't want it to be super strong since I didn't want it to take away from the character. And I thought, just make it light so that it's more gentle looking, I guess. Because I was really going for quite pastely colors here. I didn't want to make it too bold or striking. I guess that's something I need to work on in my future pieces. I'm quite scared of doing really really bold colors so I could work on that. Maybe in the next piece I might do more bolder colors. I mean I, I already do reds and stuff so maybe I can do something that's very yellow and orange subject or maybe really bright colors would be interesting to do. We'll see. So we will be jumping into the preview soon and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It was supposed to be super fast or fast and chill. No no pressure, no particular idea. I hope you guys enjoyed the video nonetheless. Um, if you did, please consider liking or subscribing. Liking the video and then subscribing to the channel. I do a lot of, you know, art stuff and um, follow me on Facebook. Instagram or Leave and Tart for more, and I'll see you around.